So I'm continuing my interest in how AI can be used, you know, in, in 3D graphics for 3D graphics on screen and also outputting it on, in real life. And I came across this one called Kubrick. So that's a play and word of Stanley Kubrick. So as I speak, um, October 2023, I've got an exclusive. They emailed me like a sign up, like a beta thing. It's called exclusive VIP subscription. So it, yeah, I think it's about nine dollars. So I, I paid for that to see how this looked and to play around with it. So this um, is aimed at um, the film industry, which I'm not really a part of, um, using volumes. So volumes are things that, like the screens behind, <clears throat> they're kind of usually LED and they allow actors to act, you know, with the environment behind them rather than having to use green screen, etc. <clears throat> And the thing about this is this Kubrick uses, uses AI, so I think it feeds into the stable diffusion AI um, technologies. So it means you can create environments very quickly. And it also allows you to segment the environments. And I'm gonna have a look at that very shortly. And it seems to have good write-ups, you know, it's got Forbes and stuff. So obviously it's linked in quite well. And there's a lot of FAQs here, facts, which is good. And let's go straight to the app. So here's the app. And um, I was just playing around with something here. I'll just refresh the screen and go back to the original page. So I'm going to go, I need to take it off that. So let's just take that off there. Okay, so here's the generator. I've got some images that I made previously. So it seems to save the images. It doesn't save your edits as, as of yet. And then the when you generate things, you've got the different You've got kind of like different ones, sci-fi, standard, moody. I found standard was good even for sci-fi ones because um, sci-fi kind of get, made it quite sort of very sci-fi. And then here's just a prompt I made. You know, I'm not a prompt expert as of yet, but I'm just sort of doing things to do with Expo 67, as you can see in the, the, um, the start of this video. And yeah. And what you do is you just basically segment and edit, and there are different tools you can segment all ob objects, which basically will split everything up. Um, this one is kind of a bit more controlled, so if I duplicate that, I'll hide the backgrounds, and I'll just calculate depth map here. So with this, because um, this is in front, like a layer, like in Photoshop, I want basically the front part to remain. So yeah, that's the wrong one, so I slide that there. And then I'm going to slide this across. Okay. And um, actually, that's, I just, I was thinking of just having some of the, but you know, this is actually quite powerful in the sense that it, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to keep that there. And then I'll hide, unhide that. And you can see it's got a parallax scroll tool here. And you can see already that's parallaxing that. And then I just have to duplicate this and go through the process again. Obviously, rename the layers for, um, efficiency and then I would um, export that or layers and that takes it to a folder I there's a good workaround there's nothing yet as of yet um, to do with image to image so you know for example if I have a, one of my drawings and I want to kind of adapt it there doesn't seem to be anything like that as of yet and there doesn't seem to be image to video but I think these things are coming so that's good um, but I can as a workaround I can actually import an image that I've made already as a fold, you know, in a folder. So if I click on a folder, I think it'll import an image. So if I've made like an image to image using another AI technology, then I can take it here and then segment that. And as you can see from the start um, animations in this video, it kind of segments things really easily and gives that really cool 2.5D effect. So it's not just, you don't wouldn't have to just use this for films. Obviously you can use this for, you know, cool games like 2.5D games. You could make a point and click adventure. Um, something I'm inter you know, what I like working in is kind of interactive art in, in immersive installations. So you could use these as projection planes and then make them interactive using a program like Touch Designer or something. And you can certainly get them this into the Unreal Engine. At the moment, you know, I've just set this up in Blender. So all I did is I um, imported these as planes. So you have to, there's a preference add on called Import as Planes. I won't bother showing you that. You can look that up. And images as planes, and you can import them as planes and then you could what I, I did was like shift them around a bit and scale them because you know obviously there's the whole thing about forced perspectives and obviously the camera is coming from a perspective so you need everything to fit into the scene if I press zero on me oops that's gone off isn't it 
Oh, well, let's just go to another scene. Sorry, so I, the ca I took the camera off the um, animation where it was meant to animate. Let's go to this one. Okay, so this is, I think this is the first one I did. I'll just press play. Okay, so that's giving, I mean, even the flat planes give a kind of cool retro feel, so I like it. The, you can see the clouds here are animating. You can't do that as of yet in um, Kubrick, but I just took the clouds made from Kubrick and that layer into Picker Labs and just did a short animation. It's very grainy, but I quite like that for this effect. You can also see in obviously things like Blender, you've got things like, um, uh, where is it, Bloom, yeah. You can t you know, just add a bit of extra spice there. And then let's go to another one of the anima anima <laughs> animations I made. So let's have a look at this one. And you can see this is all segmented and nicely set up as well like that. Kind of weird, creepy kind of expo animations and then AI kind of excels at the creepiness. So hopefully the creepiness will remain with AI, these kind of that world of the unexplained because as the AI improves, it might become more generic. So we might hark back to this kind of retro AI of 2022 and 2023 that things looked a bit odd. Okay, so that's fine. Let's go back quickly to the um, Kubrick setup and you can see it's got a lot of other things like in painting so obviously when you've if you if you need to fill in a plate you know something like this so if you wanted a more crowd here or you had the sky that you'd taken out then you can go to the blank areas and do in painting um, which is here and you can do either do modify or replace so replace will replace the blank areas as far, I, far as i can see and then modify will modify you know you paint over the existing areas then you type there Anyway, so hopefully this might give you some inspiration to look at 2.5D work. I don't know how much the subscription plan is going to be. Um, one thing to note, some of the edges on the animations I made are, are kind of jaggedy. You can easily get around this because this is this program you can super scale. So you can do that here and you can take it up massive larger, four times larger. So it's not going to have those jagged edges. but. I was just kind of rushed to do this. I've got other work and um, I actually quite like the jagged edges because it looks quite retro and collagey and indie, which is something that I kind of like that style, you know, sort of making things from the ground up. Anyway, thank you very much. Um, obviously this will help you to make environments. Um, Cities of the Imagination, you can buy my book, check out the link on, you can buy it on Kindle for 6.99 UK pounds and it'll help you to make an imaginary city using mega tools. 3D tools, traditional tools, and also AI. And it takes you a whole, a th whole process to kind of make kind of imaginary city for your art or your games or your sculptures. And um, that's it. And also check out Kubrick in the link. I definitely recommend it. Obviously some of these techniques, you can actually do this anyway in using stable diffusion or mid journey and then use um, masking tools and things. But Kubrick is kind of set up in a good way. I definitely recommend having a look at it and looking at the price plan when that comes through. Um, thanks very much. Remember, you can be amazing if you press a like or give me a comment or subscribe to my channel and I'll be doing more of these soon, 3D with AI. Thank you very much.